Hi everyone, welcome to Say Nin Hao to study Chinese. This is HSK Level 1 course, and I am your teacher, Ronnie. Today you are going to learn lesson 5, Di Wu Ke, which is Ta Nyer Jin Nian Er Shi Sui. Ta Nyer Jin Nian Er Shi Sui. It means her daughter is 20 years old this year. Now let's move on to our first part, warming up. We can see there are two groups of things here. One group is pictures and one group is new words. And now let's first focus on the new words. First one is 六口人 here. 六口人, 六六口人, and for 人, we already know it means human, person. So 六口人 actually means six people. Six people. Liu means six. Okay, first one is six people. Next, second one is jia, jia, jia. It means family, family. Next one, nu er, nu yu, nu er, nu, nu er, nu er. It means daughter, daughter. Next one is xue shang. 学生, 生 is the neutral tone. 学生, 七月学, 生生, it means students. We are really familiar with it. Next one is 七十岁, 七十岁, 七十 means 70. 七 is 7, 十 is 10, so 七十 is 70. And 岁 means age, so this means 70 years old. Last one is 二十岁, 二十岁, it means 20 years old, 20 years old. Okay, I will give you 15 seconds and now try to fill in the blanks. Okay, time's up. Now let's check the answers. First one, 六口人, which is B. Really easy. You can see there are six people in this picture. Next one, 家, family. Which one is family? C, obviously. And then B can be a family too. Look at the atmosphere. Look at the vibe. They look like family. Next one is 女儿, 女儿, which one can be daughter? A and D, A and D. Okay, next one, 学生, student, student, which is E. And 七十岁, 七十岁, 70 years old is F. Next, 二十岁, 20 years old is B, B. Okay, we can see this text, this lesson is about ages and family, right? Okay, now let's move on to text one, which happened in the school. Let's see the new words first. This one, read after me, please. Jia, 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 jia means family, we just learned it. And if I want to say my family, how to say that? My family. It is 我的家, right? 我的家. And in last lesson, we've learned when the noun after the is kinship or a person or group of person, then we can omit the. So 我的家 can be simplified as 我家, 我家. So it is enough. And try to say your family, your family. Then it should be 你家, right? You means your. You means 你, you means 你. Okay, 你家. Next one, his family is 他家, yes. And her family is 他家 too. The pronunciation is the same, but the, but the character is different. Okay, so try to say our family, our family. We've learned how to say the plural version of a pronoun, which is to plus a man after that, right? A neutral term, man. And so our family is 我, me, plus a man, then it is 
我们家, 我们家, and your family. You is the plural one. How to say that? It is 你们家, yes, 你们家. Next one is their family, their family. Then it should be 他们家, 他们家. Excellent. Now try to say teacher's family, teacher's family. So the same as the formal ones we've learned, we need to omit the, right? Omit the, because family means a group of people, a group of people. So teacher's family is 老师家, 老师家, 老师家. And friends family, friends family, 朋友家, 朋友家. Okay. And classmates' family is 同学家, 同学家. Okay. Now, when I want to say whose family, whose family, then it is 谁家 or 谁的家. Yes, 谁家 or 谁的家. And let's make a sentence. Whose family is this? Whose family is this? So first, the, the subject of that sentence is 这,this. 这是谁的家? 这是谁的家? Whose family is this? 这是谁的家? Okay, this is 家, family. Next one, second word is 有, read up to me please. Yo, yo. Let's see the pin of this word. Yo. Actually, it should be the initial E plus the final E, right? Yo. And because it is acting as a acting as a syllable by itself, so we need to put a initial E before it. And when we put initial E before it, we will remove this. Final E, final E, okay? We've learned it before. And let's see what this means. It means to have there be. To have there be. So if I want to say, I have friend. Have friend. How to say have friend? It is 有朋友, 有朋友. So if you want to say have something, just plus just plus a something or someone after this yo, okay? So this is the structure for you. And try to say, have Chinese friend. Have Chinese friend. And this is, 有中国朋友. 有中国朋友. Yo is the neutral tone, don't forget it. Okay, next one. I have Chinese friend. I have Chinese friend. It is 我有中国朋友. And 朋友's有 is the neutral term. Now try to ask a question. Do you have Chinese friends? Do you have Chinese friends? Do you have Chinese friends? Then this is 你有中国朋友吗? We just need to put a ma this question word. Remember it? It is a particle used at the end of a question to indicate this is a question. 你有中国朋友吗? Do you have Chinese friends? Okay, this is 有. The last new word is 口. 口, 口, initial 口, and the final o, and the tone is the tone, and it is a magic word for members of a family and etc etc means there are many other occasions but today we are going to focusing on only the family member meaning okay so this is cold cold if i want to say three people in a family three people just three people try to say that it is san ren san ren 
So we can see sun here means three. And ko here is the measure word. And ren, human. So we can see when we want to say how many people, we will put the number and the ko measure word. And then the thing be counted, such as human. Sun Korean means three people. And try to say, in my family, there are three people. My family has three people. My family has three people. Okay, this is the answer is 我家有三口人. 我家有三口人. My family has three people. 我家有三口人. Okay, this is the new words. Now let's try to read it from the start each four twice. Three, two, one. 家, 家, 有, 有, 口, 口. Okay, now let's move on to the text. First, I'm going to read it for you for once and please listen carefully. 你家有几口人? 我家有三口人. Okay, first sentence. 你家有几口人? 你家 means your family. Have you have 几口人? How many people? 几, we learned it. It means how many? How many? So how many people actually is 几口人? 几口人? 你家有几口人? The subject. 你家, the verb have you and the non 几口人. And the answer is 我家, the subject, you, the verb, 三口人, three people, three people. Really easy one, okay? Really easy text. Now let's try to read it from the start. Three, two, one. 你家有几口人? 我家有三口人. Okay, now let's try to read it in a row. I will be A and you will be B. 你家有几口人? 你家有几口人? Okay, let's switch the row. You A, I B. Please. Excellent. Now let's move on to next. First, let's see the new words. Fourth new word is 女儿. 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 Read up to me, please. 女儿. 女儿. It means daughter. Daughter. So my daughter, how to say that? It is 我女儿 or 我的女儿 We can remove 的 because 女儿 is a kinship to me So I can remove 的, omit it Okay, 我女儿 Next one, your daughter is 你女儿, 你女儿. His daughter 他女儿 Her daughter 他女儿 Okay, and Teacher Lee's daughter Teacher Lee's daughter. Li Lao Shi Da Nyer. Yes, Li Lao Shi Da Nyer. Lao Shi means teacher. We try to say, she is Li Lao Shi, uh, teacher Li's daughter. She is teacher Li's daughter. Then we just need to put she at the beginning of the sentence, right? Ta and the verb is Shi. Ta Shi. Li Lao Shi. The near she is she means she means to be to be don't forget it it is a really important word in Chinese okay 她是李老师的女儿. okay whose daughter how to say that whose daughter 谁的女儿? 谁的女儿 is whose daughter 谁的女儿? Okay, try to say, whose daughter is she? Whose daughter is she? 
we know in the questions in Chinese, the word the word orders are the same as the declarative sentences, right? So we still will put her at the beginning of the sentence, which is ta she. She is whose daughter? Whose daughter? Okay. Don't forget about the pronunciation pin of these words we've learned before, okay? The next one is Ji. Read up to me, please. Ji. The initial Ji, the final E. Ji. Ji. A third tone word. It means how many. How many. We just come across it before. Ji. How many. And how many people is Ji Kou Ren, right? How many people in the family? And you are if you are not asking about how many people in the family, just generally, then you can use the exchange this med word with ge, which is the general med word. Okay, 几个人. Next one is sui. Read up me, please. Sui. Si wei, sui. Initial si, final wei, fourth tone. Sui. Sui. Read up to me, please. Sui. It means ear, which is used in the ages to to describe ages. And how to say three years old? Three years old. It is san sui, right? San sui, san sui. So if you wanna describe the age of someone, you just put the number before the sui. Sui. Okay. This is the way to express the H. Last one is L. It is a neutral tone. Please, we need to read this something quick, okay? Neutral tone. L. 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 Uh, L. L. It is a particle. Uh, it is always used at the end of a sentence or in the middle of the sentence to indicate a change or a new circumstance. Change or new circumstance. Okay, l, l, and we will see it in the text. Now let's move on to the last word of this text is Jin Nian. Read up to me, please. Jin Nian. Jin Nian. Ji Yin Jin. Ne Yan Nian. Jin Nian means this ear. This ear. Okay. If I want to say this year, I'm three years old. I'm three years old this year. I'm three years old this year. Then I will say, uh, 我今年三岁。今年三岁。今年三岁. Okay. Now let's try to read it from the start, each word twice. Okay. Three, two, one. 女儿, 女儿。几, 几, 岁, 岁, 了, 了, 今年, 今年. Okay, let's see the text. Please listen carefully when I'm reading. If you can, try to read up to me. 你女儿几岁了? 她今年四岁了? So first sentence. 你女儿, your daughter, your daughter, 几岁了? How old is she? How old is she? And l is used at the end of the sentence, right? And because it is asking about an age, so age is a thing that changes year by year. And it is asking about this year, actually, right? 你女儿今年几岁了? How old is your daughter? It actually means how old is your daughter this year? This year. It is a new circumstance. So we use look at here. And the answer is 她是今年 this year. 四岁了四 means four in Chinese, okay? Four. 四岁了, four years old. 她今年四岁了. Look here again. 
indicates the new circumstance. So we can see here is a way to ask ask age, ask age. Who plus Jisuila is the structure, and the answer of it is who Jisuila. Who Jisuila. Now let's try to read it from the start. Three, two, one. 你女儿几岁了? Okay, now try to read it in rows. I will be A, you will be B. 你女儿几岁了? Okay, now let's switch the row. Three, two, one. 他今年四岁了. Very good. Now let's move on to text three. So we can see there are two new words. First one is 多德窝多, initial 德 and the final 窝, and the tone is the first tone. Put them together. 多, read after me, please. 多, 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 it means many, many, indicating a degree or extent. Okay, indicating a degree. So it's kind of like how much, how much. Okay, next one is da, de, a, da, initial de, final a, and the tone is fourth tone. Put them together. Da, read up to me, please. Da, da, da. It means old, old. And it is used to, used in uh, age. In this text, actually, it means big, but in this text, it is used as the age, which means old. So, 多大 here, when we put these two together, 多大 here means how old, how old. So, we can see here, 多 is here how much, and old here is how old, old. Now, let's read it from the start, each for twice, three, Two, one. 多, 多, 大, 大. And 多大 means how old, how old. Okay, now let's move on to the text. I will read it once and please listen carefully. 李老师多大了? 他今年五十岁了. 他女儿呢? 他女儿今年二十岁。Okay, okay, let's see the text one sentence by one sentence. First one, Li Lao Shi teacher Li. Duo da means how old, and Lu here indicates a new circumstance, a change. So it actually means how old is teacher Li this year, although it didn't say. It is this year is not in the sentence, but it actually means about this year, 今年, 今年, this year. Okay, and the answer is 他是, 今年, this year, 五十岁了, 五十岁, 五 means 5, 十 means 10, so 50 means 50, 50. 五十岁, 50 years old. She is 50 years old this year. Next sentence, 她女儿呢?她女儿, her daughter, her daughter. Let's see, here is a n,n. This particle, do you still remember it? We've learned it before. It actually, it is asking about the things mentioned before, okay? Mentioned before, it is always used in the interrogative interrogative sentences used as an interrogative pronoun and it in it is asking about things happened before and before we are talking about the age so this is this question is asking about her daughter's age what about her daughter what about her daughter what about her, daughter? What about her age and the answer is 她女儿今年二十岁. 她女儿, her daughter, 今年, this year, 二十岁, 20 years old. 二 means 2, okay? 十 means 10. 
二十 ，twenty 岁 means years old. Years old, 二十岁。Okay, this is it. Now let's try to read it from the start. Okay, three, two, one. 李老师多大了？他今年五十岁了。他女儿呢？他女儿今年二十岁。Okay, this time I will be A, you will be B. Okay. 李老师多大了？他女儿呢？ Okay, let's switch the role. Please start. He is now fifty years old. His daughter is now twenty. Okay, this is our text. Now let's move on to our language point. First one is the interrogative pronoun, 几几 which means how many? How many? Interrogative pronoun 几 is used to ask about. The quantity of something, the quantity of something, and it is usually used to ask about numbers smaller than ten, smaller than ten. Okay, now let's see the structure of it. Okay, see the structure. Of it. The first example is 你有你 means you. 有 we just learned it. 有有 it means have. Have we learned it before in the text? So, 你有 means you have. You have. 几个汉语老师？几个？几 is how many? 个 is a very general measure word. And after the 几个 is 汉语老师 Chinese teacher. Chinese teacher. So this sentence extra means how many Chinese teacher do you have? How many Chinese teacher do you have? So we can see in the first sentence, the structure of 几 is 几 plus a major word, right? A major word, and then plus a noun, plus a noun. Let's see if it is right. Okay. In the next example, let's see if it is right. Li 老师家，李老师家 means in teacher Lee's family, teacher Lee's family, and you, you have, you, teacher Lee's family have 几口人 how many people? Let's see the structure of 几口人 first. 几 here, yes, it is right. 几 plus a measure word, 口 and plus a noun, 人 yes. So we can see here is the structure for 几 how many people? It is. 几 plus a major word plus a noun. Last example is 你女儿几岁了？你女儿 means your daughter, your daughter. 几岁了？几岁了？几岁了？几岁 means how many years old? 岁 means old, years old. Okay. So as we can see here, there is no noun after this major word 岁 there is a rule here to indicate the circumstance it has changed. So when we are asking about age, asking about age, we just need to ask G plus the major word Sui. We don't need to put any other nouns after it. Okay, this is the structure and the special occasion for G. One is G plus a major word plus noun, and when we are asking about age, we don't need to put a noun after it. Okay, so this is the interrogative pronoun G. Next one is numbers below one hundred. One hundred. So in Chinese, numbers are really easy when, as soon as you see how to read one to ten. One to ten. So now let's read it. Read it after me, okay? From one to ten. First one. E. Read it for me. E. 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 Okay. 
Next one is R. 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 Two. Next one, three. San. 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 Si an. San. Next one, four. Si yi si. 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 Okay, next one, five. Wu. Wu. It's a third tone. Wu. Wu. Next one is six. Liu, this is the gesture for six in China, okay? Six, looks like this. Okay, next one. Liu, 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 Le Yo, Liu. The initial is Le, Le, and the final is Yu. Please don't pronounce the initial as Ne, okay? It's not Ne, don't use your nose, it's Le, Le. Okay, next one is Qi, seven. Seven in Chinese looks like this. Okay, the gesture is like this. Qi, read up me. Qi, qi, qi. Next eight is ba, ba, bo a ba, ba, ba. Next one, jiu is nine. Nine, it looks like this. Jiu, jiu, jiu. Okay, this is from one to ten. Let's try to read it from the start, each for twice. Three, two, one. E, E, R, R, San, San, Si, Si, Wu, Wu, Liu, Liu, Qi, Qi, Ba. Ba, jiu, jiu. This is from one to ten. E, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and the ten is ten, ten, ten. Read up me, please. Ten, ten is here. Ten is here. So one to ten, we already know how to read them. It is really easy. Now let's see this line here. This line here, the multi multiples of ten. We already know ten is shi. Let's see which is twenty. Twenty is er shi, er shi. As we can see, it is two and ten. We put them together, right? Two and ten. And in in China, this is the gesture for ten. Okay, a fist is indicating ten. Okay, so. 20 is 20, 20. Okay, next one. 30 is here. 30, 30, 30, 30. So we can see in Chinese, it is, really, it is really easy to count multiples of 10. We just need to, need to say the, the tens, tens, Position tens place first, okay. Tens place first, and then the unit place, which is ten. The tens place is twenty, right? Two, and then the the unit position. Okay. Next one, forty is si shi si shi. Fifty, wu shi. Sixty, liu shi. Seventy. 七十 ，eighty， 八十 ，ninety， 九十。Okay, let's try to read it from the start. Each for twice. Three, two, one. 十，十，二十，二十，三十，三十，四十，四十，五十。五十，六十，六十，七十，七十，八十，八十，九十，九十。Okay, it is ninety, ninety. And then let's try to read the 
random words like this 23 23 i just said we will read the tens position first tens place first and then read the unit place so in for 23 23 the tens place is 20 right 20 so we will say 20 first and then we will say the unit place which is three sun so 23 20 sun really easy right now try to say 19 19 for 19 the tenth place is 10 10 right tenth place is 10 10 plus a 9 right 10 plus a 9 so we will say 10 and then the unit place is 9 which is 19 so this is 19 read up for me please 19 the next one 56 56 56 50 is the tens place so it is 50 50 and then the unit place is 6 liu so this is 56 56 next one 88 88 tens place 80 so 80 and the unit place is 80 so 80 Okay, now the last one, last example is 99. 99. At the tenth place, it is 90. So it is 90. And the unit place is 9. So 99. It is 99. 99. This is the numbers below 100. Below 100. It is really easy to. Read them, just need to practice more, practice more. The okay, next language point is L, which is a neutral tone. L, it indicates a change in the sentence and it is usually used at the end of a sentence or sometimes it will be used in the middle of a sentence. So first one, first example is Li Lao Shi Jing Nian Wu Shi Sui La. Li Lao Shi Jing Nian Wu Shi Sui La. 今年五十岁, this year, 50 years old. And in last year, she's not 50, she's 49. So this circumstance is changing. And this year, is she changed to 50 years old. That's why we use le to indicate the change. Next one, 我朋友, 我朋友, it means my friend. 朋友 means friend, 我, me, 朋友, friend. Okay, 我朋友, my friend. 我朋友的女儿, we can see here is a 的, here is a 的, which indicates the possession. 我朋友的女儿, 女儿 means daughter, we just learned it today. 我朋友的女儿, my friend's daughter, my friend's daughter. 今年四岁了, this year, four years old. My friend's daughter is four years old this year. And we use le to indicate the change because she is not four years old this year. She is three years old last year. Okay. The last one, 你女儿几岁了? It's a question, interrogative, quite interrogative sentence. 你女儿, your daughter, 几岁了? 几岁 means how many years old, right? 几岁了? In this sentence, we cannot see any word indicates the time like 今年, which means this year but we still know this question is as, asking about this year's thing because there is a lu means the change the change this so it is actually asking about the age of this year not something not changing okay this is a lu, really easy one really easy one the last one last language point is 多大? Du plus da means it means how old, how old. So first one, let's see. Ni Duadala. Ni Duadala you how many years old? Lu indicates this year, right? Is it changing? Ni Duadala. The next one. Ni New Year, your daughter. Jin Nian this year. Duadala. Your daughter this year, how old is she? 
how old is she this year? Okay, 今年多大了？多大 means the age. Next one, 李老师多大了 ？How old is Teacher Li? Teacher Li. So actually, age is not a privacy in East Asia, or even、um, Southeast Asia. Maybe it is not a privacy like in America or Europe countries. It, actually, sometimes it is very common for people to ask about someone's age, and it might be even necessary to ask about age when they just met. Okay, just met when they are still total strangers, and but there are some rules we need to obey when we are asking about age. We need to be more polite sometimes. For example, when we are asking about an age of someone who's who's younger than us, who's younger than us, especially who's younger than. Who's like ten years old? No, no more than ten years old. Okay, then we will ask. 今年几岁了？几岁了 ？Okay, 几岁了 ？It is the way to ask about the children younger than ten years old. And if for some young people, when we are asking about young people, or someone who's Who looks like、uh, shares the same, the similar age like us? Then we will use 多大 this one, 多大 okay for young people 多大 and for those people older than us, older people we will use 多大年纪了多大年纪多大年纪呢言年记忆记 This way is more polite, more polite to ask about age when we are facing older people. Okay, so these are the language point for today. Now let's try to answer some questions according to the actual situation of yourself. First one is, 你家有几口人？你家有几口人 ？Okay. Okay, for me, I will answer it like, 我家有三口人。我家有三口人。Okay, next question. 你今年多大了？你今年多大了 ？Okay, I will answer it. 我今年二十六岁。我今年二十六岁。Okay, next question. 你的汉语老师今年多大了？你的汉语老师今年多大了 ？It actually means how old is your Chinese teacher this year, right? Okay, next one. 你的中国朋友家有几口人？你的中国朋友家。有几口人？你的中国朋友 means your Chinese friend and your Chinese friends family, right? Because there is a 家 in this sentence. So your how many people are there in your Chinese friends family? Okay, try to answer it. So there, I will answer it as an example. 我的中国朋友家有五口人。我的中国朋友家有五口人。Okay, last question is: 你的中国朋友今年多大？你的中国朋友今年多大 ？How old is your Chinese friend this year? Okay, try to answer it. Okay, I will answer it as an example. 我的中国朋友今年。二十三岁，我的中国朋友今年二十三岁。Okay, very good. Now let's move on to some exercise. Exercise. First one. First one is. 他是 what? 他今年 what 了 ？So first one, we can see he looks like a student, right? He looks like a student. There is pack backpack here. So, 
How to say student? It is 学生, right? So 他是学生. And let's try to say how old is he, right? Here, 今年, this year, how old is he? He looks like 10 years old. So we might say 他今年十岁了, Okay, next question. 他家有what人? Okay, this one is really obvious. It is asking about how many people are there in in their family. So we can see in the picture there are three people. So San Ko Ren. Don't forget about the matter word Ko. San Ko Ren. Next one. There is a teacher and a student here. Let's see the sentence. Ta shi womanda han yu what? Ta jing nian what la? Okay, ta shi, he is woman da our han yu Chinese. So, ta shi woman da han yu what? Lao shi, right? Han yu lao shi. And ta jing nian what la? It, it looks really like the sentence to describe someone's age, right? So we can say maybe he is 30 years old, okay? So 30 is 三十. So 三十岁, don't forget about the magic word for years old, okay? Age. So 他是我们的汉语老师, 他今年三十岁了. Okay, last exercise. 这是张老师的 what? 他今年 what? 了? Okay, first one. 张老师, 张, 张, 张 is a really, really common Chinese family name. Okay, 张老师 means teacher. 张, teacher 张. So this is teacher Zhang's what? In the picture, we can see there, it looks like a mom and a daughter, right? So, Zhang Lao Shida Nuyar, maybe, or Zhang Lao Shida Mama. But in today's lesson, we learned daughter, how to say daughter. So, let's fill in the blank with the daughter, which is Nuyar. Nuyar, this is Zhang Lao Shida Nuyar. How old? Let's say she's my, my 20 years old, okay? So, it is 20. So don't forget about the so the matter word for age, okay? 20岁了. Okay, this is the exercise for today. Now let's move on to the retroflex final. Retroflex final. In Chinese, this character er, er can be combined with a syllable before it and to form a to form a retroflex syllable especially in northern cities of China, in which is written as the character plus er, and it is spelled as the syllable plus er, okay, in pin. For example, first one is without er, let's read it. Okay, I might have drawn it too much. So without er, let's read it. It is xiao hai, xiao hai. The final for this hai is I write xiao hai, but when I put a er after it, listen to my pronunciation. Xiao har, xiao har, it sounds like what? It sounds like this, right? Har, this. So there is a rule for this retroflex syllable. When we are using this er after, after the finals, so when the final is ended with e and n, ends with e and n, and for example like this, i, a, an, something like this, the finals like this, then we will remove this e and n, e and n, and put r after it. So it becomes r, r, r. For example, like this, xiao har, not xiao hai. It is xiao har, okay, xiao har. This is the rule for it. And when this e e sounds like u u, okay, sometimes it sounds like u. For example, han zi in zi, this e actually sounds like u, right? 
in this occasion, we still will remove this E and put or after it. Okay, this is the second rule, second rule. And for, let's see here, fang guo, fang guo. Without ru, it is for an fang, ge wan guan, fang guan. In guan, the final is one. But when I put an R after it, we need to remove N here, right? Because I said here, when it is ended with E and N, we will remove it. So it is fan guar, fan guar, guar, not fan guaner, not like this. It is fan guar, fan guar. Okay, last one, xiang shuer, xiang shuer. It is xiang xiang shi wei shui and er without er it is xiang shui xiang shui and as we can see the final here is wei right wei it is written as this but actually the pronunciation of it it is wei and we will get rid of e and put an er after it so it is wei war it sounds like war so it is xiang shuer xiang shuer okay this is the retroflex final now read up me from the start each for twice first one xiao har xiao har next one xiao niao xiao niao this one is really common one we don't need to change anything just need to put er after it xiao niao next one Fan guar, fan guar, last one. Xiang shuer, xiang shuer. Okay, this is the retroflex final. Let's move on to next one. The differentiation between e, u, and yu. The finals beginning with e, u, and yu. The differentiations are really clear, so let's just read them. And during the process of reading, we will find the difference differences between them. Okay. So first one, read after me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, and with e is ya, ya, ya. So ah uh, and ya, the difference is really, really clear. So next one, uh, uh. This one is ye. E, it is not e, okay? It is not e for e. If I use the international, this it, it sounds like e, but no, 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 it's not like this. It sounds like this e, but for e in this, for e in this e, it actually sounds like this e, okay? These are different. Pay attention. So this is e and e. Next one is. Ow, ow, read up me. Ow, next one is yow, yow, yow. So we can see from this to this, we will put pronounce e first, right? Ah, uh, and this is yow. We will pronounce e first and then pronounce this thing after, okay? Next one is o, oh, o. Oh. This eo eo next an an yan yan it is yan okay it is an it sounds like ah uh, and this is like yan okay in this ah uh, sounds like this in and in yan it sounds like a uh, yan yan next one is Ang, um, ang, um, don't forget about the uh, alveola and vela nasal. Next, yang, yang. Next, ung, ung, yung, yung. Okay, now let's move on to u group, u groups. Pay attention to the differentiations, okay? Differences. Now read after me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, wa, wa, I, 
I, Y, Y. We are pronouncing U first in this line, right? Next, A, A, Way, Way. The pronunciation pin of this is actually this, but we will write it like Way. Next one is An, An, One, One. Next, An. An, un, un, ang, ang, wang, wang, ang, ang, wang, wang. So this is the u group. U group. Last one is u group. U, u. First, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next. An, an, yuan, yuan. Next. An, an, yun, yun. These are the differences between these E, U, and U finals. Now let's move on to next one. The differences between aspirated and unaspirated un initials. We already know these two groups of initials, okay? The aspirated and unaspirated. For these groups of initials, there are like both the for these groups of unaspirated and aspirated, the tongue position and other other the shape of the lips are all the same. The only difference is the air. One is soft and one is stronger. For unaspirated, the air is the air is like it is much soft, much more soft. And for the aspirated, the air is stronger. For example, poor, 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 poor. You can put your hand in front of the mouth, or you can pick up a tissue or paper, okay? Poor unaspirated, poor aspirated. It, the difference between them is really, really clear, okay? Really clear. Now let's just try to see these, these initials with finals, okay? With finals. Let's read the syllables together. Read after me, please. Bang, bang. Pong, pong. You can see pong, pong. The air is really different. Next one. Do, do, tu, tu. Next is go, go, ko, ko. Next, ji, ji, chi, chi. Okay, next. Zi, 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 zi. Okay, last one. Put your hand in front of both. Zhu, zhu, chu, chu. Okay, we can feel the air is really different. One is soft and one is strong. Now let's move on to next part. Next part. The rules of pin part four. Part four. Syllable dividing mark, syllable dividing palm. So for the final speaking with the syllable speaking with a, w, and u, uh, these three finals. And when they are after another syllable, we will use the syllable dividing mark to divide these two syllables. Or if we don't put the mark between them, we will consider them as one syllable, which might be really confusing for people to understand the meaning of this sentence. Let's see some examples, okay? Examples. First one is here. Without the mark is po yao piao piao. The um, the initial po, the final yao, right? Po yao piao, which means to float. But when we put the Mark before this ah uh, before it, 
then it becomes p r p r we know these are two syllables two syllables so p r actually means fur lined jacket okay now let's see next one next example cn and c an Xi'an means earlier before, but Xi'an means a city in China. City in China. And next one, jie, jie, jie and jie, jie means to receive, to approach. And jie, jie, two syllables, it means hungry. Next one, jiang, 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 it means wheel, wheel, shell. And ji ang, ji ang, ji ang actually means excited and impassioned. These are two words. Next one, fa nan, fa nan, fa nan. For this, we will read it like this, fa nan. So in this circumstance, we will always put this n for the latter syllable, okay, we will arrange the n for the latter syllable. So when there are there are one initial in a in a in a pin, okay, in a group of pin in, and we cannot we cannot be clear, be sure about which one it belongs to. We will always put the initial, give it to the letter syllable okay not fa nan it is not fan an it is fa nan okay read up to me please fa nan fa nan it means to launch an attack and if we put an mark before a uh, then it is to receive a verdict verdict it is fan an fan an okay last one Okay, we can see here is fan gan, fan gan, fan gan, it means to load, to hit. But if we put a mark before a, uh, then it is fan an, which means work plan, work plan. So this is a syllable dividing mark here, syllable dividing mark. Next one, let's see the strokes for today. Two strokes, first one is Hang pie, hang pie, which means horizontal to left falling. And the direction of writing it is horizontal and then left falling. Okay, this is the direction of writing it. Horizontal left falling, horizontal left falling. Let's see the example characters. First one is shui, which means water, shui. And here we can see the horizontal left falling here. And then a left falling, right falling, water. <clears throat> okay, next one is you. You means again. Now let's see a uh, horizontal left falling, hung pie, and then a uh, na right falling. Next one is pie dian, pie dian. <coughs> it is a left falling and then to a dot, left falling to dot. We will write a left falling first and then a dot, which is a longer dot, a long dot. Left falling, a dot. Left falling, long dot. Let's see the example. First one, nu, which means female and woman. So we can see here is left falling to dot and then a left falling horizontal. This part is the left falling to dot, pie dian. Okay, next is how, how which means good. And in the left part of how, actually, it has a female, this word, left falling dot, left falling horizontal. And then in the right part of how, it is a sun, it means sun. So this is these two strokes for today. One is left falling, horizontal to left falling, one is left falling to dot, okay? Now let's see. Let's see the single component characters for today. First one is Shui. We just met this, met this before here, right? 
We just know it means water. And in ancient time, it actually looked like this. It means the mountain streams, mountain streams. And in, as time goes by, it slowly becomes like that in modern Chinese. Now let's try to write it with me. Okay, write it with me first. A vertical hook. And then a horizontal to left falling, and then a left falling, and then a right falling. Try to write it again. It is a vertical hook, horizontal, left falling, left falling, right falling. Horizontal hook, Hori <clears throat> vertical hook, horizontal, left falling, left falling, right falling. This is shui. Shui, it means water. Next one is nu. We just we just made it before too. It means woman, woman. And now it looks like this. Try to write it with me, okay? Pick out your pen and paper. First, left falling dot, and then a left falling, and then a horizontal. Write it with me again. Left falling dot, left falling horizontal. Again, left falling dot. Left falling horizontal. This is nu, which means woman. Next one is lu. We learned today, which indicates the change or the change of a circumstance. Now, as we can see, it looks like a baby just born. Baby just born. And now it looks like this. Let's see how to write it. First one, a horizontal to left falling, and then a vertical. Hook. Write it with me again. Really easy one. Horizontal left falling vertical hook. Horizontal left falling vertical hook. Okay, this is the last one is da, the a, da, which means a uh, big, which means big. Opposite to small. We can see it looks like a human before. It actually means someone who's spreading his arms and legs. And now it looks like this. Write it with me. Horizontal, left falling, right falling. You can get a da. Write again. Horizontal, left falling, right falling. Okay, this is da. This is da. Now let's see. The stroke order for today, stroke order, we've learned the two stroke order before. One is from left to right, top to bottom, and then another one is first horizontal and then the vertical. First left falling and to right falling. So today it is outside to inside, middle to outside, okay? So first let's see outside preceding inside. Let's see the example. First one, si. Si for we can see in the stroke order we are writing the outside part before the inside two things before okay we are writing it like this vertical horizontal vertical hook and then a left falling and then this thing a curve and then a and then a horizontal to close this structure next one guo which means country nation it is the same you can see we are writing the the outside frame for guo first and then we will write the thing inside and then we will close this structure this is outside outside preceding inside okay next one is middle preceding size from the middle and then to size for example first one xiao which means small you can see we will write the vertical in the middle first and then the two dots. Vertical first and then the two dots. And it is the same as water we just learned, shui. First we will write the vertical and then we will write the things at the side. So this is middle preceding size. Okay, so these are all for today's lesson. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.